The not guilty verdict in the George Zimmerman trial has sparked new discussions about and protests of the Stand Your Ground law that originated in Florida in 2005. Since then, the Stand Your Ground law has been invoked in more than 200 cases in Florida where charges were dismissed or defendants were acquitted or, or not even charged at all. One case that doesn't fit that description is Marissa Alexander's. She's the 32-year-old Jacksonville, Florida mother who in 2010 fired a single bullet that lodged in her kitchen ceiling. Alexander says that she fired a warning shot to scare off her husband, who was confronting her in a rage over some text messages on her phone. Her husband later admitted to previous domestic violence against Alexander, but no matter. Despite claiming that she stood her ground and acted in self-defense, Alexander received a 20-year mandatory minimum sentence in May of last year for shooting a ceiling. Joining us from Jacksonville is Democratic Congresswoman Corrine Brown, representative of Florida's 5th District and one of Alexander's most vocal supporters. Joining our panel here in New York is MSNBC host and attorney Ari Melber and Christina Swarns of the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. Representative Brown, I want to start with you. You have been such a fierce advocate for Marissa Alexander. Tell me in your words why this case is so important. Well, first of all, I want to tell you that uh, your father is correct. Fifty years later, each one of us still have to continue to work to make things better. Yep. I mean, so the fight goes on. Yep. First of all, this female, uh, uh, warning shot, the day that it happened, uh, uh, the, the day that it happened, it was a, a restraining order against her husband. Yeah. Uh, she was beaten when she was pregnant and put in the hospital by her husband. Yep. I mean, and the way stand your groundwork, the, the uh, officer write it up. And so the judge decide. And so if you have an officer writing it up that's not trained, it's a problem. So let me let and, me, and, and, and let me tell you, the week before, someone was convicted of murder, got 15 years. Right. So, the, I mean, the, the disparity and the discretion there on how the prosecutor charged is totally unacceptable. Okay, and so that's exactly what I want to ask you about, Representative Brown, because it's not just some prosecutor out in this world. It is Angela Corey, the exact same prosecutor who, who made a decision, despite the fact that there were six women on the Zimmerman jury, to not even bother to prosecute Zimmerman herself, to send the other folks. That's you talking there with, uh, with Ms. Corey. But she aggressively went after Marissa Alexander. Why the disparity? Uh, I cannot tell you that. But if you look at Jacksonville, we have a 50 percent direct filing of youth. Direct filing. That means we're filing them as felons. That is the new slavery. They will never be able to get a decent job. The person that was the prosecutor before, uh, Harry Shostein, he had a program that we work with youth in our community. And uh, this is the, what happens when people do not go to the ballot box, yep. clearly. Let, let, you know, you I, need to ask the right questions and make sure that you are electing people that are going to work with the community. Uh, uh, Representative Brown, hold for me for one moment. So, Christine, I want to ask you a question. Why would Marissa Alexander have even needed stand your ground? She was in her home, which is castle doctrine, which is law in all 50 states, right? Why, why does she even need stand your ground? Well, I'm not sure whether she needs stand your ground or not, but I do know that what it seems to have happened in this case is a judge says, based on her behavior around the time she fires the shots, it doesn't seem like she was afraid. It doesn't seem like she was acting in fear for her life. And what I think is lost in that conversation is aside from the issues of race, is this history of abuse yes. of this woman, right? Um, just and like the, the president baby was eight days old. Right, right, right. And that's what I'm saying. And the, like the president yesterday said, we have to understand context. Yes. And we have to look at a situation in the context of history. Mm -hmm. Marissa Alexander's judgment was in that moment has woman. to be viewed yeah. through the lens of the abuse she sustained through the course of that relationship. And I don't know, Miss Alexander, yes. but I don't know whether there's a family history of abuse. So she's making a judgment um, from a history of abuse from this man as to whether or not she was in mortal danger. That was just completely absent yep. from but the analysis of what happened here. Ms. And that Alexander. was a mistake. Yes. Representative Brown, yes. Let me say she had a master's degree. She worked her way through school. Yep. She had no priors. So it was this was her first offense. Yep. 
And we have so, sent this woman to jail for 20 years. And, and, and you said it, but I don't want the audience to miss it. When all of this happened, when this man who has admitted that he has exactly. abused this woman as well this as, woman as, well and as four others and, and, and others this that there woman was an, and four others yes that there was an eight her eight day old okay. baby, baby was that's in right. that home and we and, have, and what we was have decided offered, to send her away for 20 years that's right but what was offered to her was we will give you three years you become a felon and you give up the custody of your child mm. oh Help me, somebody. That was that right. was her plea bargain option. That was her plea bargain. And so when we, when I mentioned it to her, she said, "Well, I offered her three years." I said, three years is not mercy, and twenty years mm-hmm. is not justice." Come on, That's right. Now. Okay, on. I, I want to bring Nina Turner in here. Oh, um, in part because there's church going on at the yes. table, and I, yes. I, I want the, I, I want Nerland to be part of it. But yeah. um, but when Representative Brown said you must vote, I, you know, I heard you respond to that, yes. and and it does feel like I keep feeling like is Angela Corey running for office, right. and does she think that there's a reason why the prosecution of Marissa Alexander and not the prosecution of George Zimmerman is the right thing to do. I mean, Representative Brown is dead on about we have to elect people, better people, people who understand that these types of laws are not the way we should go in this country. We all have the power in that case, and that's what I don't want us to lose here, Mm -hmm. that if we ever want to do something about the proliferation of these stand-your-ground laws and other laws, whether it's voter suppression or whatever Mm -hmm. it is, we have to elect people who have a consciousness. For her to have to prove her worth as a human being, there's not an American who doesn't couldn't understand that concept that you have a group of people who are purely American born in this country that have to prove their worth generation after generation in this country. How rapists get less than what this mother who was trying to protect her life and her child got. You know, this is a Dr. Martin Luther King moment, Professor, and it is injustice anywhere yes. is a threat to justice everywhere. everywhere. And, and Representative Brown, that is, uh, Congresswoman Brown, this is part of why um, your advocacy on this has been so important. Thank you so much for joining us from Florida. Thank you. And coming up, the next major test for the Stand Your Ground law, we're going to talk to the father of slain teenager Jordan Davis and also... My letter to the woman who inspired me and so many others this week. But first, a quick programming note. This week, the legendary Stevie Wonder announced that he will not perform in Florida until it abolishes the Stand Your Ground law or in any state where the law exists. So for the next hour, you're going to be hearing all Stevie throughout our show. More Nerdland at the top of the hour.